Hello, everybody, and welcome 
back to the Vanquisher League. Week number seven, baby. We're on our way. I'm joined by the ever lovely Golden Gad today. I'm Rap Terror, and we've got EL Wyvers OBS today. I mean, I'm excited to see see them all to both playing OBS, especially. You know, I remember watching them last season. I've seen these players before. You know, I've known I've known for a bit, but Golden Gad, what do, what do you think about these teams? These teams both sitting currently at the middle of the table. They're competing for that fourth spot, and since we are in a week seven, so there's really only three weeks left to prove yourself. So. If you want to make it to the playoffs, you need to hit that top four cutoff in your group. And uh, yeah, they're going to be competing for that spot. But we're going to go straight into draft nice and quick here. So we're, we're not going to have to stall too much. When I was doing my research, I didn't really find anything that was particularly notable besides um, a bit of Aurora and Gragas for furry little feet on over on uh, uh, Yale Y. So we'll see if they end up actually picking that up since that is kind of flavor of flavor of the month on Aurora, but I know that is disabled for the next couple weeks, but so they might just stick to that Gragas, but you know, that is at least something to be encouraged by if coming into the next weeks. And just like that, Gragas is taken off the table. Yeah, Gragas is gonna be gone. Very powerful pick right now. Like you said, Aurora is banned for the next couple weeks, just came out. Probably good, a little, little strong <laughs> right now, I've heard. Um it's not good when a brand new champion is already at a 49% week win rate with less than a weekend. That means that a lot of people are doing very well with her. Yeah. Uh, exactly. But the Lu Lucian and the Ivern will drop their last ban for Eli. It's going to be the Amish. All righty. So a little bit different than we are, have been seeing lately with bans, um, especially the Ash. A little surprising there. I will say from yesterday, Ash was extremely powerful as a first pick, and we're, we've been seeing that a bit more in the pro scene. So I actually like seeing Ash getting banned. It just provides a bit more utility to the, uh, you know, your AD carries. And since the trend, you know, people like to follow these kinds of flavor of the month picks. And uh, yeah, seeing Ash banned, but we're gonna see both AD carries get traded over. We got Jinx a little bit more safe, a little bit more scaling. Um, so, you know, to try and build a comp around it's a it's a set piece there and then we have kaisa here that can enable some dive and we're immediately going to get a follow-up there on the alistar and uh no surprises there you do get two stacks off of alistar's pulverize um knock up combo there so you know i think it's so far pretty good sights here i, I always like seeing early rotations 80 carries and the braum is a nice supplemental pick here yeah braum is also a pretty good counter in alistar you know you will just auto attack him after he lands and he basically is a free stun because he's no way out also really good for blocking those Kaisa W's, long range nukes. The Maokai gonna come through too. Also looking like a very strong pick right now. I've seen a lot of top Malphi and Maokai, sorry, top Maokai that has been really, really performing well. The Quirky, you know, standard mid, everyone's picking Quirky if it's not Trist. Uh, but I'm gonna guess the Trist ban will come through from ELY this time around. It's gonna actually first be the Silas. The changes haven't gone through yet, so I don't know if that is quite necessary, but that makes me think they have someone with a very strong ultimate they're looking to pick up here. That's yeah, usually I'd why be, you ban it. I'm pretty surprised to see the Silas considering the other team has the Maokai, and that's yeah. usually one of the champions that Silas does do extremely well into. But obviously they already locked the Corky, so I guess getting rid of one of those aggressive picks in the mid lane is their priority here, so Corky is not so threatened. I will say Maokai, always a champion that is welcome in any comp, it provides so much stability and also vision control, which is the most underrated thing about that champion. The saplings do provide so much for your actual space taking, so I'd always recommend picking up this champion when available. And they're just going to ban away the other very strong tank jungler, and as a result, they're going to end up on a Mumu here for... ELY, so we'll see if that ends up being a pick that does come to fruition. I mean, we did see it last week. It was something that looked pretty strong. I mean, I, I would say it's it's a pick that does especially well into AP champions, and we're seeing Ziggs and Maokai, so already there, two AP champions locked up, and uh, pretty interesting to see, considering Ziggs not necessarily a champion that gets piloted very often. Yeah, I'm not, I don't remember Frida Potatoes being much of a Ziggs player. Uh, producer, if you can remind me if he has been was okay. I'm being reminded he actually was very much a Ziggs player. Why did I think he was a LeBlanc player? I'm having things backwards, but oh, I'm mixing it up with, with another player. Okay, okay. Well, anyways, though, the vein gonna come on through for the top oh, pick <laughs> for ELY. Um, honestly, not the worst first set. I think, at least in me as a set player, I'm kind of okay with that because if you time the E right as Vayne Q uh, like kind of tries to tumble you will pull her in she will yeah. lose that and then you're just gonna beat her silly so 
Yeah, I think it's kind of like a skill matchup. As we get on into game, I'm going to be taking a very keen eye on that. I'm a big set fan, so I am pretty excited to see that coming through here for OVS. And, you know, they're... This, I mean, this is this is a this is a big game. Both these teams only one game apart for ELY. This is a chance to start climbing up the ladder, build a little space between the bottom of the table, keep yourself in that playoff race, and for you know try to like making like push for the playoff race. And for OBS, you know, you're also trying to cape up there, catch up with the top teams in the league. You're only at two losses, so you know one of them slips up, you could easily slide into the top three or two very quickly. So this series will be very important. We are nearing the back half of the back end of the season. So, you know, every every game matters. Every series matters here. And once again, thank you to our sponsors, Friend or Foe and Pro Comps. Both of them are fantastic. Check them out. Chris Sunga, Julian, always fantastic. They make some really good designs. I can say that they have. Check out check out their hoodies. They're, they they make some good hoodies. Yeah, I will say one thing that. To, to note is, is for the set versus Vayne matchup, it will be on a knife's edge. That's generally how Vayne works. If the, the melee matchup, especially someone like set who does provide a lot of damage, actually does find a couple kills, it could really tip the matchup in their favor. But just off of, uh, you know, I think with no jungle intervention, it should be range top matchup, always favored uh, in this particular matchup. But it's just going to be who's which jungler gets up there first. And it looks like Maokai is starting on this top side. So I wouldn't even be surprised for a level three gank just immediately off rip yeah so maybe burn see. that vein flash maybe get the set uh that flash advantage that could end up solo getting the solo kill later yeah i think i could see that happening very easily uh set unfortunately the rough part for set in this matchup really is the level one because you only have you have to you have to be very careful with your choice and until you have multiple abilities to kind of combo off of to chase or just um get the shield up with it's kind of hard to deal with vein and as you saw, he did grab his E to start this out. So he's going to have it starting off a little rough, but I will be interested to see how it goes. But also in the mid lane, too. That's also an interesting matchup to watch. Ziggs, very good champion, someone who can really match Corky with the poke levels. Uh, also someone who has phenomenal wave clear and can impact the map from pretty far away. So he could be... Very useful. If he can get some time to maybe roam towards top or mid after he hits level six, it could be a good opportunity as he is going in onto Tough Daddy. Tough Daddy going to have to jump on out of there. Yeah. Yeah, tra trades, lots of trading right now in this mid lane. Yeah, pr a pretty surprising amount of trading. I'd say usually this is just a handshake. <laughs> we just farm kind of lane. And I, I will point out one thing in particular for this comp. Um, Oversoul has drafted the Maokai, of course, which is you know, very good into a single target uh, carry opponent, but this is a, a triple threat comp with the Kai'Sa, Corki, and, and the Vayne here, so it's not going to be so easy. Obviously, there's no cleanse on any of them, so that's going to be a little bit better here for Oversoul, but it's definitely still going to be a hard game nonetheless, since Vayne and Corki are pretty elusive, and then and then especially getting onto this Kai'Sa with the, when, once the invisibility comes through, it's going to be pretty difficult, even with the point-and-click CC of the Maokai, so... If I had to guess, Elysium should have at least an easier time in this game, unless there's a huge advantage carved somewhere, but they haven't really set up any of those lanes to actually end up with that. So we're going scaling all the way, and then it'll be just up to this Jinx, to be honest. And uh, I don't know how much I, I value a one carry versus three carries uh, when we get to that late game. That's true, but I mean, if there's any carry that could do it, it would be Jinx. That's true. <laughs> so we're going to see if Oversoul can do that. Tough Daddy taking quite a bad trade here as Matt Sat coming down the bottom side, but he gets headbutted back into the turret. Forced to go for the flash out from the Alistair, and everyone going to walk away. So they got a flash out of it. I'd say that is kind of worth it. They also got the Ignite, too. Yeah, I'd, I'd say that was pretty good uh, no matter oh, what. Just making sure they stay safe. I'm Freedom Potatoes I'm just walking off. No mana wants to catch up this wave, but no mana, it's going to be kind of hard, and Corky might be able to threaten kill. It's going to be pretty close, though. Um, the percentage wins here. Giving the odds, about 9% over. Oh, Tough Daddy with a flash forward. Oh, is he going to fall to the turret? Oh, sliver. The sliver of health. My goodness. Yeah. Uh, very, very close there. No minions actually pulling aggro despite the auto coming through. Well, none of the ranged minions, at least. So going to keep... Tough Daddy up and alive. So that's pretty fortunate. But both flashes used and both TPs also going to be dedicated towards mid. So staying completely even. But we're seeing a, a nice cold purchase here for 
for the Corky. I, I don't think you should ever feel threatened to get solo killed by a Ziggs unless you're playing against Appa himself. Um, so I think this is going to be pretty good for the rest of the game. Yeah, we see OP kill switch coming up here, looking for Freedom Potatoes. There's no flash this time. Can he get out? He drops the bomb. No, he has not yet. He's still running. He's still dodging. Still chucking him back. Got to be careful, though. Remember, Amumu does have two Qs. A lot of people don't remember that the bandage toss is double. Yeah, and, and a big dodge there. I'd say that was definitely a kill if that bandage toss does end up landing, but uh, a little bit unfortunate there on, on the angle there. So Freedom Potato is going to walk it out, and that, that is a really good sign since that uh, Mumu had to waste some time here. But if I am Oversoul, I'd really want to prioritize these grubs. But you're seeing already Elysium. OP's kill switch is already oh, there. Here comes free range beef looking to go in with the headbutt, but he doesn't get the pulverize. He's going to take a little bit of poke there. They really want to get something going in this mid lane, it feels like. Yeah, but nothing's really landing. And, and I'd say this is pretty good for Freedom Potatoes. Doesn't really care too much. Uh, the HP is, of course, in the favor of Tough Daddy, but one gank can be everything here. And you see Maokai already kind of walking towards mid here. And with the wave shoved so much, it's not going to be so easy to avoid a gank like this. And I will say, like, I, I used to watch uh, OVS in another league. And I, well, I don't remember, didn't remember Freedom Potatoes being a Ziggs player. I do remember him being someone who was a very well like very well played mid laner he's usually pretty safe doesn't take massive risk he knows how to really dodge around in rough situations with the, you know those double ganks and such so it's nice seeing that skill continue on into this game so we do see ovs gonna grab the first strike of the game for themselves though there are people collapsing from elysium here they could try to go in ziggs can't get on in the amumu goes on in tough daddy going in alistair going in first blood onto the maokai and a second kill to follow onto the jinx elysium they lose the dragon but they pick up two yeah a nice use of the uh, curse of the sad mummy they're gonna find two locked down immediately and the dragon still gonna go to the way of oversoul but losing two kills there especially considering its first blood is gonna be a pretty hefty gold lead into the pocket of uh dretchy uh, I, i'm not okay what, what are you calling dre chisel chisel <laughs> nizzle <laughs> i'm a, i'm just calling dre from now on you know i'm gonna call him dr d Dr. D, yeah. Well, <laughs> I don't know if we want to call that. Now. Maybe not anymore, but, you know, we'll just go with Dre, I think. Um, anyways, uh, in the top lane, furry little feet. Not going to be able to catch anything there as uh, Matt's tat. Uh, just going to claim up that blue buff as, uh, you know, game's going to slow down just a little bit. It is a bit of a CS lead in top, but I'd say this is an acceptable CS lead considering it is a uh, range top versus melee top matchup here. And... Uh, yeah, I mean, I'd say not too bad considering there has been no jungle attention towards top lane here. Yeah, not really any at all, which, you know, makes it all the more impressive. Limster still hasn't died yet. Oh, there he gets. He got the pull, got the punch. That's what you want to see. Get the get him in the tumble and get a couple bits of poke. That's how Seth really pokes, ironically, as a melee champ. Is Freedom Potato's taking a lot of poke here from Tough Daddy. But still holding out pretty well. Matt Stat is around. So is... OP kill switch and free range beef has just been sitting in this alco for a bit. I think they're setting up for something. I think they want to go for born to born to ice. Free range beef is in, in is in the free range right now. Just kind of waiting in the in the wing currently. Could find a big flank here. Has and has just regular flash, so could be pretty surprising, especially with Braum moving away. Gonna look for something oh. here. Yeah, he has been spotted. Born to Ice gonna go. The flash goes through the headbutt, though. Doesn't land because of the root and the knockup coming through. They are tearing into this Alistair. He doesn't have ultimate, so he is gonna take a lot. And Born to Ice will pick up that kill. Matt Sat's coming down. Freedom Potato 2. This is the call. <laughs> the twisted advance coming through. The flash out from the Kaisa. It's two ultimates for the flash, but I think that's worth it. But OP kill switches on the top side, looking for Limpster. So they might be able to trade something back here. Kill Limster, got to watch it. Ooh, dodging the first bandage toss and is going to work out safely. So a little good play there. Pretty unfortunate there for Free Range Beef. The trap's engaging just in time to stop the uh, headbutt there. So very fortunate for Born to Ice. That definitely would have been a huge play that, that could have turned how the lane status was just because the push has been pretty brutal here in the bot side. Um, with a 30 CS lead, I mean, 
Yeah, that feels pretty bad if you are Kai'Sa, since you, it's going to delay you to get those evolves even longer. And uh, they are quite important at the current state of the champion, so that's a little bit unfortunate. But going to have to live, laugh, love through it through this and uh i'd say i say limster's doing the same in the top lane so just trading it off side by side and you know you end up about 1k and it's been it's been a persistent gold lead since that first dragon yeah just slowly building that up it's only about a thousand gold right now so basically just the first blood kill and this is basically the kill difference that's really where the gold is right now well there's a 30 cs lead building on the top side. There's also a 30 CS lead building in the bottom, but on the other side here, Born to Ice has been really kind of having his way with furry with um, Drish, Drish Chisel. Drish Chisel Nizzle? I don't, I don't know. I don't like that last part. I'm not going to say that, but I will just call him Dre. We'll just call him Dre. <laughs> because he's, there's uh, these names. I don't know if you saw it in the, in the, when we were doing pick and ban, but their names just read as one long line because they're all so long. Yeah, there are quite long names here, but you know, I, I think this, this, as I said, I think this kind of lane setup, especially with now six scrubs in the pocket of Elysium, this is actually pretty nice for them. Obviously, you would have liked to see it on Oversoul with that Ziggs, but Vayne also another champion that loves to have these grubs um, because just such an uncontested split pusher for the most part, as long as there's ample attention on the other side of the map. So I feel pretty confident if you were uh, Elysium at this point in the game. Yeah, this is a pretty good point to be confident with. Last week, Freedom Potatoes on the Ziggs, 13, 3, and 15. And OP kill switch going in onto Matstat. Still early in the game, so Matstat not quite that beef monster that we we're expecting from the Maokai quite yet. But he does have a lot of healing, and the dragon is up. OVS bot lane the fur has the priority coming down here, but this time, will they be able to challenge it as... Alea goes in on to OP kill switch. Tough Daddy trying to go in. The ult comes through. Kill switch is all alone. The team is collapsing with him, but can they get through anything? They are getting. Oh, gets the flash over the wall, so gets out. Running around on the side. Born to Ice just poking away at everyone. Everything is just missing him. And they've got to be careful. The ult comes through. OP kill switch almost falls there. Now Dre's on the run, too. The Corky goes over the wall looking for something, but the Twisted advance forward. They're going to pick up two on the side of Elysium, but the trade back onto Tough Daddy. Double kill over to the Kaisa. Dre looking for another, but he drops the barrier. Freedom Potato's going to pick that up for a double kill himself. And it's two for two, but I think those are more important. Right? It might be another one. It is Born to Ice going to pick up free range beef. And that's a, you know, those are the trades you want. Three for two and a dragon. I'd take that if I'm OVS. Yeah, and that was a pretty well-played fight there from Born to Ice. I feel like played that pretty flawlessly uh, with the dodge upwards instead of going towards the uh, opponents there. I I'd say that was pretty well-played there. And they will find at least some foothold. And they're going to continue their dragon stack now at two apiece. Uh, moving over to that soul. Obviously, they lost the two sets of grubs. But if you can't get to soul super quickly, that will be an encouraging sign. It is going to be Mountain Drake, which does actually quite well into multi-carry comps. Because obviously, you're splitting focus a lot. So it, it kind of mitigates that a little bit uh, compared to other comps where it's, you know, front to back. Where, you know, either way, someone's getting focused in front to back comps. But, you know, multi-carry, I, I think Mountain Drake has a lot more value. Yeah, I think so. I think, you know, those shields will be good for both of them. For uh, Elysium, you know, that's just going to be good because they're all very squishy outside of, of the Amumu and I guess a little bit of the Alistair. But side of OVS, it just adds more beef to their frontline. Limster and Matstat will be more than happy to have all that shielding, especially Limster with the, the lane matchup he is in. The rest, of, oh, we got two members of OVS coming up topside. They're looking for this gank opportunity onto Furry Little Feet. The Twisted Advance is coming through. It's going to catch up onto him. The ult coming in from the Ziggs. They're going to just knock everything in the kitchen sink at him. Matt's not going to pick up that kill. Good trade there, but Tough Daddy and OP Kill Switch may be looking for an opportunity to get onto Limster. They, they know Freedom Potatoes here. I don't know if they know Matt's dad is still around. Oh, Kill Switch kind of reveals himself. Yeah, and, and I feel like this Amumu's felt a little bit uncomfortable besides that one dragon fight. It's The bandage tosses have not been landing, so I'd say they need to improve that a little bit. Nice deny on the cannon there uh, from Aya. Good awareness that they can just do that. Um, I will say I hope to see that this is not like a snowball from Furry Little Feet. I've seen so often where Vayne players will 
you know, find the early lead and then die or die once and then from there just snowball. So gonna need to make sure to play safe. Uh, especially now that you have no summoners for the next uh, couple minutes here. So good awareness is all you need for the, for those range tops. Yeah, just had to have the awareness to know, hey, just because you have a temple doesn't mean you get out away from all of this and you know, the Herald getting picked up there for the side of OVS. And that could be good. I don't know, we haven't all stocked. Elysium got all the grubs this game. So if they manage to get onto the turret with those 380 carries, they will shred through it. I actually expect to see them kind of, given the situation they're in currently, try to go for a more of a split, like a 1-3-1 one, one kind of setup. Have put Kaisa mid, put Vayne top, and we're going to go back actually and look at this fight around Dragon from earlier. Yeah, Born to Ice does a good job here of actually spotting them out too. I thought this fight could have been turned here, but the, the bandage toss at the end right there doesn't land onto Born to Ice as, uh, you know, the TP does come through here for oh, Nimster, okay. but gets cancelled by Furry Little Feet. But that didn't really change the fight, so that was a summoner burned for pretty much nothing um, since Born to Ice dodged out anyways, so... Um, Pretty unfortunate there. A waste of resources just a little bit. And that kill, or that flash does result in a kill later in the game. So, you know, you know, tracking yeah. flash timers is super important. You could see the effects there in this game. Yeah, they're very, very important. And this is why. But at least it prevented a fourth kill from in that fight. <laughs> Everything's kind of slowing down a bit. Elysium still up gold despite a little bit of the struggle they've had in moment. Aya going forward though. Matstad is here. The Twisted Advance coming on through. And they are going to look for the Kaisa. Getting a lot of damage out. Aya going to pick up that kill. Just trying to get it. Now can they get out? They will just fine. And another fantastic get flank from Matstad. Yeah, I, I, I'm kind of curious on the positioning there. I think um, Free Range Beast should have just... Uh, committed to blocking the ultimate rather than trying to find a, a trade kill since it was pretty doomed. But wow, a very fortunate back there. Um, barely able to escape away from that vision there. So pretty impressive stuff there. And and now they're going to be able to claim up most of this turret. I'm not sure if it'll go down all the way. They they look a little bit scared to actually claim, commit to it. Um, but Jinx is sticking around. The backs might come through. Oh, the backs just might. They are indeed, but everyone is still here. Turret goes down. They're going back forward. Oh, no. This is going to be so bad for them. Drishizzle goes down. Born to Ice is going to pick up another double kill for himself. OVS, e Elysium returns to the scene of the crime and just falls yet again. Yeah, that, I mean, I will say in the, me in the meantime, they actually do find... Uh... Freedom Potatoes in the mid for the first death, but fi uh, finding the bot lane tier 2, that's like 550, 625 gold, something like that, yeah. um, into the pocket of that Jinx, plus two more kills. I'd say this Jinx is now in a c condition where none of the three carries from Elysium can really contest in a, in a 1v1 at this point, and that, that is a very scary sign considering Jinx outranges all three of these champions. And that was a 5k gold. So when we started that fight, it was 26,000 gold for OVS. They're at 31,000 now. It's a huge swing for them up in the gold count. You already see the Jinx. Two full items online. The boots online. The call is done. This is a very strong position to be in for OVS. The Jinx is really starting to snowball in this game. And now it's on Elysium to try to find Born Dice. That's the, the difficult part for OVS, I will say, in this whole thing is, again, 380 carries is very difficult to really keep track of and keep all locked down. There's a very high chance one of them will get on to Born to Ice. The question is, can OVS keep their 80 carry along and live enough to make it a trade and make it worth it for them? Linkster, I, I might be run down up top. No, I will say it's additionally, it's going to be, now that OVS have as a lead, oh, hold that thought. Oh, yeah, OVS. We got Limster trying to run, gets the punch in. Can he get the ultimate? Gonna try for the ult, gonna slam him, trying to slow him down, trying to run him down, but free range beef is here. And it's not even gonna matter. Furry Little Feet's gonna pick that up on their own while the dragon does go over to OVS and they are on Soul Point. Yeah, I was just about to say, I think at least one thing for Oversoul here is they do have um, a huge advantage as far as objective control. They have the Maokai and the Ziggs for poke as well. So now that they're ahead a bit, it's going to be even harder for Elysium to actually break into these this territory. And with Soul Point now online in four and a half minutes, it's going to be very difficult for Elysium to break through because they don't have the 
most, you know, they have uh, Alistar and Amumu, which I'd say is a pretty substantial front line, but they don't really have too many skip buttons besides the bandage toss. They really have to play through that extremely effectively if they want to find these engages. But at that point, usually it's it's a double layered uh, kind of kind of setup where you're going to have the Ziggs poking from the front line while the Maokai is just tossing saplings over the wall and helping uh, kind of prevent anyone from going in. So I think it's going to be pretty hard to find these fights now that they are behind. Yeah, they're going to have to we're gonna have to see if they can really play these fights well. It's actually not that far behind, though. They're only 300 gold down or 500 gold down. This game has been pretty even gold-wise. But in terms of map state, I definitely think OVS has the advantage. They've managed to only lose... Have they even lost that to upper turret? I can't tell. I haven't... Let me see, go back over the Ziggs block. No, they have. They have lost their upper turrets. They've lost one for three in the turrets. I guess I could have just looked over the turret count. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But... But, you know, I still think, despite the goal lead, be, and it's still an even goal lead, which means it is basically a dead even game. This is going to be, though, the mid game, the point where I think both of these teams, like this, like this is going to really st dictate where this is going to go. As we see Furry Little Feet going forward, the teleport coming in as well. They're looking for these three. The Twisted Advance will go forward, though, and that teleport may not have been worth it. How do you break through a Bra Maokai as this comp? I think it's so difficult, uh, especially because Maokai actually can, you know, prevent the headbutt from coming through. That is a feature of this champion. So I think it's just been so difficult. They need to find an objective control first, but OP kill switch oh. in a terrible position. Yeah, he has been caught out trying to use the Curse of the Sad Mummy, but he will fall. Freedom Mateo is going to pick up that kill to teleporting on in. And I think that's the call to start up the Baron. They don't see this other ward over here. Now they do. Okay. They're going to start this up. Elysium is in the area, though. They've got to be careful. They might have the jungler down, but they are a little dangerous in, a, in terms of health. Their damage is gotta... surprisingly low. Yeah, Matt stat, ooh, gets pushed back. Did flash forward, so that is down on the Maokai. Baron is still chunking on OVS. Tough Daddy has been blasted back, been pulled forward by Limster. He's going to get knocked up, going to get torn around, and Matt Stat's going to pick up that kill. Dre trying to do some damage on the side, but isn't going to be able to do anything. Born to Ice is going to pick that up. Yeah, and you're just seeing how hard these objective fights are. You just don't have the foothold, especially with the Amumu down. I said that was their only easy entry point. Obviously, a big Alistar flank would be another one. That's possibility, but, you know, it's just been so difficult to break through the Maokai, Ziggs, Braum setup that they have. So, I, I, I'm, I'm thinking this is going to be a pretty tough one now that, uh, you know, Jinx is so ahead. It's just going to be the Jinx show for a while, and we, we need to really see Elysium find a creative play. That's their only real option here as this game continues, since, you know, they have the triple to carry. They could go for a 1-3-1, maybe try and pull a player, but their TP has just not been as effective as the double TP setup that... OVS has and I, this is the one thing I always complain about like when you do commit this extra su offensive summoner spell in in your in your top lane it does afford a lot of control in the map and it means like you have to really push your advantage in in these lanes and I I can't say the vein has had enough of an impact um, so far since they haven't really played the jungler through that lane yeah it feels it feels like the vein has really been uneventful of a pick it hasn't really had much agency and because they don't have much tank or engage it's been an issue as OVS is on the Baron Elysium knows they're here though they've spotted them out they're gonna maybe try to steal this the twisted advance coming through kill switch goes on in free range beef is in as well can they steal it away he is gonna go down the smite didn't matter and it's gonna go over to OVS they're gonna pick up both of the tanks off of Elysium and walk away with the Baron yeah, I mean, it's a nice look, but you can't really do anything if your AD carries cannot get over that wall, and then, oh, you know, dragon. they don't have flash to get back out, so this is going to be chained straight into that dragon here, and then Zig is also going to catch a massive wave on the bot side, so everything's really answering over Soul here. Obviously, they're burning a bit of timer to claim this Drake, but this is Soul, and now that that comp, that that wall of Braum and, and, and Maokai is going to be even harder to chunk through, and, and they're already having a hard time, and now Jinx is even less susceptible to getting dove, so I, I think this is... Uh, I think this is mostly lights out if I had to guess. Yeah, this is a point. Unless, unless this goes another 20 minutes, unless the, the full item 80 the carries curse, come right? online. Yeah, the <laughs> curse. I mean, I've, I've seen more. I, I have seen enough games go past the 45 minute point this week in pro and here to go. Eh, I can see it happening. But 
I know of, yes. They're a team that, while they play, they try to play very safe and not really take massive risks. They are a team that is very good at closing out games. When they get the lead like this, they get the good positioning, they will, clo they will manage to close it out. So it's on Elysium to find the plays, to look for opportunities, to make picks, to get some shutdown, especially on that Jinx 500 gold sitting on her, just for popping her, just, just for popping her, before you even get the kill gold. So yeah. can they find it? The gold, 5,000 right now up for OVS, 45 to 40. Oh. One actually a little bit less than that. Oh, and we do have a pause. Matt stat has disconnected from the game. It's not over. Qu we know we say it's almost over, but it's not quite over yet. Uh, but let's take let's review their builds right now. I'm actually interested. The Maokai took the Landry's and Warmog, so just kind of like playing more like a support this game. Yeah, I mean that that's I believe Peanut built that a couple series ago, from what I remember. So I think that's pretty bog standard there. There's nothing really too shocking, I'd say. Obviously, Horizon Focus, uh, Britty so is somewhere out there happy <laughs> because Horizon Focus is a very good item on the Ziggs, of course. And then uh, besides that, nothing really too surprising besides Free Range Beef not even completing one item just yet. Um, they will. We're going to get a replay here on the Baron. So you'll see the setup here. It's not too bad of an engage here. Obviously, has to get over the wall before the root does come through. Finds a four-man on the uh, Curse of the Sad Mummy, but there's just no damage left because... Dre Chisel actually gets rooted up before the play even begins, and there's no flash to really dive on the pit, and since Born to Ice was in such a safe position, it was pretty difficult, but, you know, I, I'd i say, you know, we might see action actually immediately after this this pause ends, so, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm very much anticipating something to go down here, and there's no one else really in the area, so it's going to be a cl pretty clean two-on-two two two with, with the interruption of a Ziggs ultimate to layer on top, so we'll see uh, who kind of comes out on top there, but... Yeah, it's yep. it's not exactly looking good here for Elysium Aries. It is not. And I also want to point out during that Baron how clean OVS transitioned. Soon as OP kill switch goes over the wall, they stopped hitting it. You watch that play, only like passive AoE damage from Jinx like hitting the uh and hitting the the the, the Mumu was hitting the Baron. They completely stopped hitting it. They didn't panic. They're like, "Hey, he's over the wall. Let's not even 50/50 this. Let's just kill him." Like, he smited at, like, 4,000 health. They just, there was no chance to take it. That is really well coordinated by that team. I think that's a sign of just how calm they are in this situation. Even, even in a situation where it could be 50-50 throw, they are playing this calmly. They are tested. They know to just take it slow. Yeah, and I th and I think I think that's really good. But I, I'm interested. I want to see how this fight goes. Because it is just support 80 carry versus... Basic, a ba and <laughs> another AD carry. carry support, yeah. <laughs> AD carry and another support, but a slightly beefier, more damage heavy support. Well, like you said, Ziggs is in the area. Kaisa, I think, is in range. If that OP kill switch CC lands with a Curse of the Sad Mummy, they, she could get in on that fight. So this could turn into a pylon very quickly. There is also the teleport is up. It looks like this pause is going a little bit longer. So we're going to return to camera. Yeah. I mean, and I, I think one thing that is important to note is the Jinx build, actually. It is a very damage-forward Jinx build, so no one can really dive on this Jinx. Like, you will just get blown up. Instead of going for something like a Runins, where that's usually reserved for a lot more melees, this is a lot of range. So seeing the Runins not get purchased, I'd say, is actually a pretty good sign. But I will say we saw yesterday, like, there was a there was a... a, a Runins on the um, on the Zeri, and it's still beat out on an Ash with a Phantom Dancer and an IE. So you know anything? <laughs> I, I I don't know if it's just Zeri's broken or or what's going on there, but you know maybe it is so bad in a one v one. But um, yeah, I I do like the Jinx build at least where it is just okay. We're just gonna slap um, Elysium with our wallets. It doesn't matter too much besides that. So yeah, and I I think also now you know unless this fight goes the other way, which I know as soon as I start talking about this, it's gonna go the other way in the fight, and the reason is gonna turn it back. But you know, looking even towards the next game, you know, since this game is looking more and more dire by the minute for Elysium, like what what changes do you hope that you, they'll make in the next draft, given I what mean, you've seen? Given what I've seen, I. Don't want to see a vein top again. They didn't play towards the top side. You pick vein to play through the vein. That's just how it works. So you have to play a little bit safer of champions in the bot side. Like Kaisa, Kaisa Alistar is a pretty volatile lane where you want to get them ahead so then they could just repeat kill over and over. But 
it kind of felt like the Amumu didn't land that way. It didn't land towards top side either. They tried some things in mid, didn't really pay off that much. So I think you really lock in what's your win condition. They picked 380 carries, but you need to pick which one is the one that you really prioritize and get super ahead. And currently, my opinion is that Corky isn't the best champion to play solely around. So I wouldn't have really focused on that lane. I would have just let it be that farm lane that just continuously uh, keeps going up because I haven't really seen this champ really take over any games recently at all. I mean, it's more of a supplemental pick where, you know, it's a it makes a double carry comp. Um, it doesn't it doesn't stand alone uh, as like someone like a Kaiso or a Vayne could possibly. And when I think about how the matchups kind of landed. You have Vayne versus Set, which if the Vayne gets really ahead, the Set just can't play for the rest of the game. Um, but we didn't really see that happen. So now we're seeing where the Set could just kind of walk up an E, which is like, okay, the Vayne has failed. So maybe we pick something else in the next game. Obviously, this is game one of a best of three, so experimentation is is definitely uh, up for grabs. I think, I think it is good to at least throw these concepts out, something they have to worry about in the future drafts. But... Uh, I wouldn't stick to this if I if I was Elysium for the next game. I agree. And I think I need to see more proactivity from the jungler as a whole. Outside of that gank mid, he really hasn't done anything. Like He took the grubs, but he's just kind of been f passively farming. If you're a Mumu, you need to be ganking. Like Your whole purpose is just to gank, gank, gank. You you are you like you're gonna go into a fight and probably just die right off the bat because you're gonna ult, but you're gonna hit a five man ult and set your team up to win. You have to be making plays, like you said. Ev like prioritize the vein, prioritize the Kaisa, probably don't prioritize the Corky. Uh, <laughs> you get you gotta you gotta make things happen on the map because if you don't, I mean I guess you're a CC bot later, but you you don't have anyone else to get agent to get agency for your team except maybe Alistair. And he's yeah. having a hard time even getting it in his own lane. So like I feel like there has to be more proactivity for the juggle. We need to see more from Kill Switch. Like I I've 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 gotta see more from him. If you are picking a champion in the jungle, you know, that is a jungler, straight up. So Amumu is a jungler. We'll, we'll, we established this fact. But if your jungler champion can be played in support to a similar degree, that means your champion has to be one of those heavy ganking junglers that needs to make something happen because the whole point is they can they can play through low econ. But a Vayne, a Kai'Sa, they cannot. Especially Kai'Sa needs to get these evolves online really early. So I think... There was a bit of division on which exact carries you should pick. I think Kaisa was probably the the pick I'd drop if I was going to the next game. Obviously, free range beef, specialist at Alistar, so it makes sense that they would at least consider that idea. But it's not like Alistar cannot be played with other champions. It's just a well-known combo. But something like a Nautilus also works with a Kaisa. You don't actually have to play Alistar, but if you will, you can still play things like Zeri, which is a bit more safe to just put in the side lane. Obviously, you would like to see some kills on that champion, but doesn't need it. Uh, like Kaisa really wants to get that accelerated uh, Q, but oh. here we go, the fight. Yeah, we're back into the game. Born to Ice getting engaged super hard on right there. Furry little feet dancing around as we suddenly freeze up. We see Dre and Tough Daddy there on the side too. So four of them have already jumped in. Yeah, no sums on Born to Ice. So when Riot catches up, we're just going to be right back in action. I think there's nothing that Born to Ice can really do here. Uh, yeah, already burned Flash, already burned Barrier. Like, this is basically a foregone conclusion. This is the fight Elysium is looking for. They're going on in. They are going to shut down the Jinx. They're going to take down Aya as well. Elysium finally finds the fight. They manage to get themselves back into the game, but they do lose a turret. So, o OVS gets a little bit of something out of that. Yeah, but I I'd say that's a pretty disastrous death. I don't, I don't, I didn't exactly see who the the kill went on to, but that was a 500 uh, gold bounty into the pocket of whoever that was. So and then one went on Vayne. Uh, I see that. And I think the other went on to the Amumu. Not which I mean, it, it's an okay scenario yeah. here. But Seth's gonna get knocked back in. I don't know if you want to do this. No, you don't. He's gonna drop the oh. sucker punch, but he will fall. The face maker was not enough. And three kills over to Elysium. They managed to get two turrets. They are clawing their way back. They were 5,000 gold down at the start of that pause. Now they are back up to dead even. The uh, Fnatic pause tech is what I, uh, this is dubbed, you know? You just, oh, you pause and suddenly you win the game. Oh, that's weird, right? No. Obviously, the pause was on the side of Oversoul, so a bit unfortunate that it did kill their momentum like this. And now they really find themselves like they had such a comfortable point in this game, but it still should be in their favor considering the Mountain Soul is still in their pocket. And this comp isn't really changing at all just from the other 
uh, team getting a bit more gold, but the Jinx is still very powerful. You still have the the Ziggs, Braum, Maokai consistency on, on objective setup here. So, you know, they should still be able to snowball this game, but it's now become just a little bit more scary if the, they do end up messing up. Like, Born Ice has been playing well all game, but a couple more bandage tosses and, and a couple more engages here uh, from Free Range Beef can really change the tide there. Yeah, and that's why I think OBS really needs to start kind of grouping up. I don't really want to, like, you can have Ziggs on the split, but I don't think you really need Set at this point on the split. You just need to kind of keep them relatively close to each other so he can assist. So we do see the Amumu coming down. Got free range beef as well. They are looking to get onto this set. So they might be trying to get this bottom tower. Meanwhile, though, on the top side, OBS reading the same kind of way. They're going to go right for this top tower and just shred right through it. And Limster seems to have sniffed out that something isn't right here. And you see also the LP kill switch and free range beef. They are both backing. So the play doesn't work. They might get the bottom turret. They do get that. At least they get the turret bounty off that. Bounties will fall off afterwards. And OVS actually lose out gold wise in that play overall. Uh, but I think they get more in terms of map pressure because they already have the inside track on this mid lane. I've already got the jungle. They might try to push this turret down too, but they do have flank. Vayne and Alistair on the flank. The TP is here for Limster if they want it. Here he comes. Free range beef coming on in. Furry little feet looking to get on to the Ziggs, but he gets knocked on up. Trying to run away. For his furry little feet are trying to escape, but it's not going to be enough. A shutdown for Limster as he gets vengeance on his lane opponent. And Elysium's attempt has been thwarted. Just way too early on the engage. There was no Amumu to kind of follow up. Also, the Pulverize seemed to have been, I don't know, canceled or, or something of the like because the Jinx really didn't get knocked up there. So a bit unfortunate. And now they're just going to take down that turret. You saw how big the execute is. A little bit more poke that this is a significant amount of damage and it should be a good foothold here. Obviously, I'd like to see a little bit more wave syncing from the top and mid, but, you know, a little bit harder of a concept since you do want to stay grouped to make sure this Jinx stays alive. But, um... They are just going to get forced off the push here. And with Baron spawning in uh, 30 seconds, they need to prioritize that, especially since that will be their only opportunity to not have to force an Elder Dragon trade at some point. And uh, obviously, Elder Dragon is a bit more valuable. So if they do it on spawn, they might have a, a, a nice fortunate timing. But the macro could get a little bit tricky once that Elder Dragon does come up. Yeah, that's going to be the hard part. They've got to either start it now or make decide to make a trade here. I see the pings. It looks like they're going to give it to the Elder. They're going to give up the Baron for Elder. That would be a very powerful tool, especially with the soul. But I think they're just going to 5v5, to be honest. I, I think both teams just want the Elder. They really don't care about the Baron at this point. Um, yeah. Oh, free range potatoes. Taking a lot right there. And the teleport is going to come in from Tough Daddy. He's not going to look for any flank attempts with it. They are going to fight this 5v5 around here. You need to be careful, though. If OVS gets the waves right, there is a really nice bot lane. If Elysium messes this up, this could be the whole game. As the Twisted Advance comes through, Freedom Potatoes destroys the vein and falls afterwards will be Free Range Beef. OP Kill Switch trying to get out, but it's going to be a double kill for the Jinx. Running down, Dre, the flash is over the wall from Tough Daddy and him trying to run away. Born to Ice, not going to finish chasing it down, but with three dead, I think this Elder is all but guaranteed for the side of OVS. Huge fight for them. Yeah, I mean, that's just demonstrating how hard it is for them to actually break through. Even with, you know, flash up on a Mumu, they just cannot reach Born to Ice. I hope they just push mid here. They should not go for the Baron. You don't want to waste any bit of this Elder Dragon, but they're actually just going to go straight uh, towards this Baron instead. They, 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 they're okay with wasting a minute, but I feel like it's ill-advised. They probably could have gotten even more on just a turret dive from the from the Maokai or a Braum even um, with I a think flash Q. I think they're looking at the, the respawn timers. By the time they got to that turret, uh, it had been about now. OP kill switch is already up. And they got the Baron for free. Um, and like I said earlier, OVS is a team. They play slow and steady. They do not like to take big risks. And like, why take a big risk when you can just get the Baron? You already have Elder. Even if it runs out, you still have Baron. You can already win the fights without it. It's more of like the icing on the cake. I do think, though, this is going to be the march to the end. The march to the sea for... OVS as they head on up the mid lane. OVS on the brink of taking the first game in this series. Two and a half minutes still on the Baron buff. I'm not quite sure on the Elder buff timer uh, how much time they have left, but I think they have enough to at least break down this turret. 
And Elysium, this is going to have to be their last stand. They're trying to clear up this wave, but, like, what do you do? There's a Jinx and there's a Ziggs. They're just going to rip this to pieces. Tough Daddy looking for a flank, but this is not package quirky. Twisted Advance going out. It's going to hit free range beef. They're going to try to shred him up. Oh, the f coming from behind. It's OP kills, which they're going to shut down the Jinx. But now the fight is still on. One dead on terms of the vein. OP kill switch on the run. Vein actually on the bottom, still pushing, trying to end this game. But the rest of the team is gone. I don't think they're going to be able to out push four. Tough Daddy trying to stop him, but is going to get executed. And OVS wins the split. They win the fight and they win game number one. Yeah, they try to index fully into the split push, but pretty good there from Oversoul. I'd say did get caught out a little bit, but still just has enough in the tank to still take that fight and uh, win the game there. So pretty well played here from Freedom Potatoes, really making a good uh, showing of the Ziggs here. Born Ice also showing pretty uh, effective gameplay here on the Jinx. I'd say pretty well played all around. And then uh, the side of Elysium, I'd say, you know, a bit of improvement necessary, but there, it, this is still just game one. There's still two more uh, to be played. and. I think they have a good sense of how they want to play the game. It's just they they were so far behind uh, pretty early in the game, I'd say, uh, where they couldn't really uh, play these fights out very well. So I'd say, you know, shout out there for Oversoul's draft uh, in particular. Yeah, shout out to them. That's a really good draft and star performance from everyone on that team. Uh, big shout out to Freedom Potatoes. The damage was insane. Had some really good plays when they caught Tough Daddy by Baron using the satchel with the kill onto the vein later on. Just very, very good play. I mean, Freedom Potatoes, play, as I've been reminded, uh, is a big Ziggs player. He's very good at it. And I think that's something you definitely have to look into Benny next time. And like we said, the vein didn't didn't really work i think i need to see some changes coming out from the side of elysium but will they be able to find a composition that works we'll find out short after a short break don't go anywhere we'll be right back
What's up, everybody? Oh, oh <laughs> Rap Terror here with Golden Gad for game number two of OVS versus Elysium Esports. OVS dominant game number one, taking down the Triple Eighty K comp on a very clean, clean match. And you know, we're hoping to see Elysium and see if they can bounce back in game number two. And yeah, start and, getting... and something's gotta gotta give, I think, in their comp here. They either drop a very aggressive AD carry or they drop or they drop the aggressive top. I think they have to, and then really focus on one side. Since that, you know, unless you're playing like a, a zero resource jungler, like you know, an Ivern or, or a Nunu or something like that, it really is very difficult to affect all these lanes at once. So I'd like to see them at least prioritize some sort of side here. Maybe put a bruiser in the top lane, just kind of something that can kind of survive on its own to really stave off the pressure that was over Soul with their last comp, but there was a lot of scary things in that last comp, and I, I think with the ban table, it's going to have to completely shift if they want to really shut that down. So pretty scary stuff here if you are Elysium, since you do want to get this win, since you are in the middle of the standings, you want to hit that fourth place mark, and I believe they are currently one game down on Oversoul. Yeah, they are. They're at 3-3, three and three, and Oversoul's at 4-2. and two. So I'd say they really need to make sure they get this win to at least tie that record up at, at fourth place and, and, and kind of uh, cement themselves coming into these last two weeks. Yeah, and I, I honestly, just taking a look at the standings for any of you that haven't had a chance to look at them right now. Currently, OVS is right outside the playoff picture, tied with third and fourth place at four and two. A win here and a loss from DDG or AKM automatically puts them in a playoff position. For Elysium, same thing. If teams above them lose, they win here. They just, they're, it's that close. Like, literally, the difference between third and sixth place is one loss and one win. That is insane. Um, so, they, they, these games matter. These games matter immensely for playoff standing and record, too. You know, you could be tied four, two, four and two, like the three teams between three and fifth are, but one is 10 and five. The other two are nine and five. So, like, th those, those games matter. So, that one loss. It could hurt later if Elysium isn't able to finish this out as we get underway into the draft. Same sides, no one swapped. Everyone's still on the same side here. And Diana coming out for OVS. Yeah, consistent ban so far on that first rotation. I mean, we saw Diana yesterday in the uh, Divinity League uh, in the jungle role, but we saw mid last week. So, you know, anything could really happen. So it's, it, it is a flex pick at this point, but I'm kind of just surprised to see the prio so high for that champion. Seraphine, a kind of consistent the banned champion you really just hate playing against this champ just annoying neutralizes every bot lane in the game so i'd say a pretty good call there and then grag is going to be something once again taken off the table does furry little feet have anything other than the vein in the back pocket there or is it just going to be once again they're going to go for the vein i'm i'm not too sure since that Gragas is taken away lucian gonna be that final ban on that side but ivern getting taken out i'd say is pretty pretty wise considering how strong that champion is and it does provide a bit more flexibility uh, as far as who your support gets to be. Braum mm. going to be the nice takeaway there. I'd say pretty wise if they do lock the Jinx again, they won't have that survivability that the Braum does provide. The only other champion that kind of fulfills the exact same role would be Tom Kench and that champ's a lot worse. So we're going to see a swap up. The Ash was left open this time and it's going to be locked up immediately. And now a little bit more engaged in the support role or in, in the AD carry role could mean a little bit more of a, a, a uh, kind of facilitating support here. But we're going to see Leona get locked up. So that's going to be a nice, easy engage. A um, little bit more tricky than the Alistar. Do has, doesn't have to look for these flanks. Can just find a nice solar flare to open things up here as the Jinx will be that pair partner pick. Yeah, Jinx is a Leona. Very classic, very good combo. Land the CC and chain it up with a lot of rockets. Very easy to take someone out very quickly before they can even react. As the Nautilus going to come through. Kind of interesting. I don't usually expect Nautilus into Leona. I feel like it, it struggles a bit, considering that you just pull Leona into stun range. But it has a free guaranteed ultimate. Like, there's not a real way to block that. It's Freedom Potatoes back on the Ziggs. It's pick. I'm surprised I didn't get banned last time. Easy, I'm gonna pick maybe a prime mid laner here for Tough Daddy. Will it be the Corky again, or will they change it up? What will we see? Tristana is open, but it's gonna be the Ari for them. So a bit more prial instead of the Corky. So now, if you want to play through mid, you have the option to. But I'd say Ziggs is just always so good at neutralizing these matchups. I don't even know if they're gonna be able to actually find too much action there. But Freedom Potatoes did play a bit riskier in the early game, so maybe they could find something there. Maokai gonna be the first ban here. 
I think it's pretty smart, but I'd say that there is already so much CC in the bot lane. You don't really need a champion like Maokai. Obviously, it makes it easier to land your uh, large Mega Inferno Death Bomb, right? I, I'm not sure if I said the whole title there. Yeah, that properly. is it's Mega Inferno Death Bomb, yeah. Okay, perfect. So that at least makes it easy to get that combo going, but they are going to ban it out. So that is at least something that does get taken off the table. Sejuani going to be the first ban since that was banned yet again. They're not really changing any of the bans here on Oversoul, and I don't think they have to. So... Sejuani getting banned means a little bit more discouraging from picking these um, melee top laners, but Vi going to be the lockdown that they want to supplement with that Leona, and I think it's pretty smart since Sigs was so slippery in the last game, so maybe they'll get a bit more lockdown, especially with the, the RE being able to dive, and that 2v2 should be quite strong, but they're going to pick Xin Zhao, kind of a 2v2 specialist, someone who really does thrive in these smaller skirmishes. Uh, been seeing this champ a little bit more the priority is definitely going up on this champ especially after i believe it got played a bunch in lec and then zach top gonna be the lock-in the great neutralizer i like to call him because you're never killing a zach that's just kind of how he's designed to be obviously has gone through a lot of nerfs over the past year um with his dominance and pro play just a bit ago but volley bear gonna be a supplemental pick should does actually quite well as far as a 1v1 isolated matchup here but I'd be pretty scared here if I am Oversoul. I feel like their damage is a bit inconsistent. Obviously, Nash still does a decent amount, but they're really going to make sure the Xin Zhao doesn't get that far behind because the dive threat is pretty massive on the side of Elysium. And, uh, you know, I don't really want to be playing into a Volley Bear by uh, Leona setup when I am playing an uh, immobile carry such as the Ziggs. Yeah, that's kind of a rough one. By Voli Leona just sounds like pain for Ziggs. I mean, also for Ash, she's also a mobile. But yeah. we'll have to see. Can Elysium bring us to a game number three? Can OVS close this out and get the 2-0, push themselves that much closer into the playoff standings? We'll have to see. And also, you know, we did see the changes in the draft. Thanks again, to our wonderful sponsor you know you love them it's pro comps masters of the draft perfect platform for showing off your skills <laughs> well just developing your comps in general lets you create your own custom comps create your own custom tier list helps you plan based on what your opponents are picking to have better picks for your team it can be really the big difference here for elysium it could be the big difference in deciding if they can bring this to game number three or not Big shout out to them. Check them out at procomps.gg. And we're seeing everyone just kind of chilling to start this out. Nothing too crazy. Pretty standard. It's got the Ari skin. $50 version. We don't have to flame here. So, you know, nothing too I'm, crazy. I'm, I'm not, not going to flame him. I bought the other skin. Oh, uh, uh, we don't we don't talk about it. You know, I personally don't support that I have to, if I want to support F uh, Faker, they take 30%. Like... Uh, I, I mean, oh, Faker only gets 30%, which is my my biggest gripe, I think. I think I, that's, I mean, that'd be mine too. But I think get a lot of other skins out of it. So I think that's fair. for me. That that was the big thing for me was all the, the loot chests you could get. I actually I actually got a gun goddess misfortune out of it. And I was like, okay, this is worth it now. <laughs> yeah, I, that, I mean, that's just RNG. So let, let's go Hextech chests. I mean, there's a lot of people who just have uh, accounts just filled with Hextech chests. But we're getting a bit off topic. I think Ziggs so far and doing a good job of just chunking tough daddy like if a Xin Zhao does roll around at any point that could be a pretty dangerous look here but we're seeing the kind of reversal here we have uh dre chisel on that jinx so should be that nice set piece that you get to play around and that will be the carry for the for the comp here on, on elysium since ari you know kind of a more side laning champion than before not really a burst mage but very little feet missing the stun there not going to matter too much. This is, of course, a, a nice beefy tank battle in the top lane, or it's just, you know, battle HP regen versus HP regen, who really uh, will actually take the win. No one really knows. <laughs> I'm actually kind of surprised they didn't go with the set here. Uh, and for me, that's because if Voli ults in, the best way to get rid of him is just to push him back out. Uh, and I think that would, and especially because it's giving him all that health, makes him basically a cannonball to throw back into the enemy team. Uh, he also does very well you know, with Vi and Leona because he can pull them off easily. He's very good at buying space against Jinx because uh, he can kind of run at her until she pops off. She's not going to really be able to get away from him. I kind of felt like that would have been a good solid pickup in this game. But the Zack still, like you said earlier, doesn't really die. I think he's a good pick still. Um, but just like I wanted to note because I was thinking, I was like, you know, set would have been really good here. But OVS... 
getting into a pretty good position right now. Looking at Freedom Potatoes from game number one, six, one, and eleven on that Ziggs. It's Limster and Furry Little Feet just kind of trading at it. A little bit better this time for Limster now that he's not playing a range into melee match, a melee into range matchup. Yeah, and now they're just gonna. I mean, I, I'm I'm noticing a trend here. Born to Ice yet again finding lane prio in this early game. Uh, at this point, I mean, this matchup, I'd say, is pretty even. Obviously, Ash quite good at poking, but they're finding a lot of, like, lane edges slightly. I mean, they're already 10 CS up. Obviously, this wave is quite large, but um, that's still a pretty big advantage nonetheless here. Tough Daddy going to get a nice chunk here onto Freedom Potatoes, but just burn the TP. So you really don't want to be burning any HP at this point since Freedom Potatoes still has that in the back pocket. So... You know, got to play a little bit careful here. Obviously, Ari, you got your nice passive stacks that do keep you alive, but don't really want to be trading too often, especially since you can't go back for free anymore. Speaking of back, we saw the bot lane for Oversoul going back, grabbing two daggers and some boots. So looking to kind of trade more aggressively here as Limster and Furry Little Feet continue at this. Limster doing a pretty good job of staying healed up and now trying to take this fight, but you got to be careful. It is a Volley Bear. It can be pretty scary. Uh, but going back to the bot lane, I actually think this is really good, um, especially because Ash gets so much bonus damage from her passive and from stacking her quiver. So I think this could be a pretty good opportunity for them to trade and be able to take a bigger, longer, extended fight in the bot lane, which I think what you want. You really want to be able to bully out in fights against a Leona Jinx, because they're going to be looking for those opportunities to engage on you. They're going to be looking for the opportunities to maybe try to pick up a cheeky kill with a dive. So could be really good. Could be a difference maker here. Jinx back now too, and the waves is kind of bouncing back and forth. Yeah, and now, I mean, I think for the most part, they should be pretty solitary. Both junglers really just want to get to that level six. I think Xin Zhao can potentially go in a little bit deep and just try and invade, but just going to play it safe, just try and farm up uh, for these grubs to spawn in just a bit. Pathing towards the top side, it looks like while Vi is going to be sitting in this bottom lane quite soon, we'll have the, well, depending on Scud All Crabs, I didn't see it too clearly, but Vi should be pretty close to that level 6 soon, so that'll be a little bit scary once that um, Peacemaker Pro, no, All right? Peacemaker Protocol? No, that is that Caitlyn's? <laughs> Sorry. That, that's Kate, Caitlyn's Peacemaker Protocol. Uh, speaking of Vi, Vi going into the mid lane. Oh, the flash fail! Freedom Potatoes with a beautiful flash, and the flash prediction from Kill Switch doesn't go through, but Matt Stat, that is the signal to get off those grubs. Did get one, so they're not going to be able to get the double grubs if Elysium manages to pick up five this game. Uh, the rest of, the, of Elysium has rotated up, too. Only Dre in the bot lane, so they're, I think they're just going to give up these two grubs. Elysium did pretty good stacking those last game, but they didn't really prove that effective in the long term. So, we'll see. Maybe they can make more use of them this game with a more traditional comp. Jinx, really good with grubs. Yeah. And I, I'd say also for, for grubs, getting at least one on, on these junglers is quite important because only the first grub gives you the actual treat and the bonus XP as a jungler. So if you are a jungler and you just want to stay in the game, just steal one and then leave. It's actually just as EXP efficient as staying for all three. So just a little tip there, I'd say, um, for actually, uh, if you don't think you can get all three, just make sure you secure the one and get out as quickly as possible, which should be quite easy when you do have smite. So... Uh, that's my little quick tip there. Um, yeah. A gad. It's a gad tip. Yeah, there you go. Gad tip. <laughs> There's the what, the jat stats. Uh, yeah, that's... the jat stats. It's gad tips. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh, you have to come up with some rhyme, right? But... Golden tips. Golden tips. There you go. Oh, now it sounds like I'm getting my hair bleached. Or... <laughs> 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 but, you know, hey, we'll, we'll, we'll work on the verbiage there. Yeah. Yeah. Dragons getting started up by OVS. They were really good at stacking those last time. This time, all four people are here. The arrow is going to land the hook, though. Going to miss onto Dre, but is getting shredded and going to go down. First blood going to go over to Matt Stat. Free range beef soon to follow. Born to Ice going to pick up that kill. A quick 2-0 and first blood for OVS. A cloud dragon feels kind of like the, it's like last game, except this time they actually got the two kills. <laughs> Yeah, this Ziggs is uh, looking really scary already. Nice Mega Inferno Death Bomb right there to start off that fight. Just finds a ton of damage on Jinx after the Enchanted Crystal Arrow. So I'd say 
very well played. And if this is going to be the continuing trend throughout this game, I, I feel like Elite, or Oversoul has a pretty nice foothold to stand on coming into this mid game, especially. But they need to make sure they don't get uh, overly aggressive since they can get engaged on. And just like last game, they have a lot of follow up CC. Uh, that, or damage at least compared to last game where they can actually find the Jinx possibly just um, no, no matter what happens so we'll see if they can actually keep them safe with the, a bit more CC on the side of Elysium yeah. oh and spotting out kill switch they're stopping the back so it's going to keep the Vi around a little bit longer and everyone spotted them out uh, looking at the CS difference though Born to Ice has really been building a big lead outside of back when they lose someone they back has really just been owning up like 20 CS most of this game already uh, has really been starting to build that lead up got one of the kills in that fight so this this Ash like people don't really respect that Ash can actually be one of the most brutal carries in the late game if given the opportunity if you let her get the uh, her, her uh, quiver stacked up and she starts just activates and just starts going into one person she can tear through almost anyone in just the blink of an eye so they've got to be careful they've got to respect the potential of this ash and yeah look like they are kind of op kill switches down there on the bottom side it's very little feet trying to draw some attention top going in onto limpster the vi yeah. is still hanging could be a potential opportunity if Aya and Born to Ice get a little too aggressive here. I, I will say one thing, this Volibear is going to be going that kind of classic new Volibear build with the Roa and the uh, Flicker Blades. So it is more of a carry build in the top side. So I'd be a little bit scared of the, the kind of mid game side laning here from the Volibear since I don't think Zac can really survive a long extended trade compared to some of these other champions. So I'd say pretty nice pickup here that should pay off in the long run, but um, you're going to be losing a bit more team fight power when you do go that build, but the side lane threat is huge. And very little feet going back in on the Limpster. It is really hard to trade a Zach. You think you have him, then he steps on a blob, two or three blobs, and suddenly you're like, oh, he's back to almost full health. But he's winning it right now. His OP kill switch is on the way. The ult comes out from Limpster, but Matt Stat is here. Don't know if they want to fight this being so low. There's still a volley ult. There's the Ari ult as well. God, kind of got juked out by Freedom Potatoes. And the Grubs have been started up. I think Elysium's just going to give these over. Yeah, and I think that really just comes off the back of Freedom Potatoes chunking with that Mega Inferno Death Bomb onto Tough Daddy. So losing the ult. I mean, Ari is right now is such a cha as a champion that's so reliant on ult, it feels like. You need to have this ult to be able to team fight at all because otherwise you're just a charm bot. Um, so having that burned so early before a fight and you don't really get anything off your first Ari ult is a pretty tough sign, but Ooh. a huge intended crystal arrow. Yeah, massive arrow lands right onto the Ari and Matt Sat's going to cleanly pick that up. Big arrow out of Born to Ice. I mean, it's in the name. <laughs> yeah, I'd say I'd say right there is, is a good example of why the name is sticking. So huge uh, Enchanted Crystal Arrow there, nice angling on it there. It's going to secure them yet another kill. And Oversoul's kind of getting away with this game. They're, they're 2k almost at, up at this point, and uh, you could actually find even more. For either oh. feet taking a big trade here, might actually go down, but just going to heal up with the help. Yeah, the oh. Ultimate. Yeah, trying to heal up with the ult, trying not to get the turret shots in. Limster got to be careful, though, getting very low, but did burn the ult out of the Bully Bear and stop the turret push a little worth there for him I, I i've got a funny joke for you the game slowed down a little bit right All now right. okay so you know i said born dice it's in the name mm -hmm. you know freedom potatoes got in his name too so he's gonna throw those little potatoes at people just little, <laughs> little tiny potatoes just, ah! i actually want that i want potato chucker zigs i just want him to just chuck <laughs> potatoes at people that, that that would work um and i could think like you you like throw a splash of oil, you know, as your <laughs> ultimate. Just a, a a vat of oil. It just, just blows explodes. up in the <laughs> Yeah, something something like that. I think could could be a good idea. Obviously, the only skin that I've ever heard a caster influencing is obviously Trucker. Well, it's Train Orn. They wanted to go a little bit more global audience on it rather than the I... very American Trucker Orn. So so I actually have a fun story on that. I influenced a skin being created. Okay. Um, I talked to the skin team. This was back in what 2016, and I was like, "Hey, 
where is Corgi Corky? And they're like, what? I'm like, well, it's this rhymes Corgi Corky. It's just Corgi Corky riding a Corgi. And at the time, they told me that would never, ever happen. <laughs> and then was it a year and a half, two years later, we got Corgi Corky. Wow. So I like to think I influenced that skin. I don't I mean, know if you I can, you can claim that. It's fine. I, 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 unless, that. unless someone disputes you. I mean, it's yeah. just facts. That's how that works. Yeah. I believe. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's the it's the best skin in the game. I mean, it's 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 a Corgi. Yeah, it's got quite the jiggle physics, I'd say. But it's the best Limster, jiggle physics. Yeah, speaking of jiggle, he might get bounced around if he gets spotted out here. Dustin, no, they don't know that they're on a ward. <laughs> so he knows they're there. He's going to give up that turret. First turret's probably going to go over. Yes, it's going to go over to Elysium. But mid turret going to fall here, too, for the side of Ovia shortly after. And the hook going to land onto free range beef. The ult's coming through, trying to get some damage back onto Born to Ice. But the bombs are flying and the hooks are landing free range video is going to go down so is dre a double kill over to born dice who will fall in the process but i think overall that's pretty worth it yeah you're going to deny this big wave as well so it is a cannon wave so that's going to go down here for dre chisel so that's even more unfortunate but these mega inferno death bombs are doing so much work i saw a nice attempt here from free range beef to flash in front of the arrow but just ends up taking a ton of damage for it and still gets the ad carry stunned anyway so there's no trading of hp available so oh, really well played from oversoul and it feels like they're really just pushing this advantage a lot obviously the rift herald and uh, a couple grubs going over the way to Elysium, but otherwise it's been a pretty perfect game. Two dragons now in their pocket, and it's looking similar to last game where Born to Ice is really putting up a big performance, and uh, Freedom Potato is really su supplementing that uh, kind of identity, and there really hasn't been a great response since the Ari Ultimates really haven't been landing. Um, Vi hasn't found anything in the game at 15 minutes in, so they need to find something if they want to actually stave off this pressure since I, I don't think they actually outscale. I mean, they have the Jinx, which is an individual outscale, but besides that, it's going to be pretty tough since Xin Zhao's in the game, Ziggs is in the game. Ash is not necessarily that weak as far as the late game is concerned, so. Yeah, I actually take in a straight 1v1. I, I often will give it to the Ash if she gets the stacks. If she walks into the fight stacked up, like with her quiver activated it's just done uh i think she wins that fight but she has to have those stacks that's that's the thing so it kind of works better as if it's just a one-on-one -on -one, i think ash loses it but if it's part of a team fight i think ash wins it out just because she's able to slow everyone down keep the stacks rolling if you get the hurricane everyone's slowed after every auto attack and you get a bonus damage on all of them so I, I actually still prefer the Ash. I know Jinx is technically the more of a carry. It's more of a personal preference. But like you said, like these are there's a lot of threats here, and the arrow is going to miss. But that's okay because there are still three other members of OVS here. All four people looking for opportunities here, and they're just going to push Elysium off the mid lane. The game has slowed down a bit, but it is 3,000 gold up for OVS. Yeah, I mean, this is not going to get much easier. They're at least pushing... On this top side, the Volley Bear is pretty successful, at least staying safe. Um, and, and at this point, I think it, it will have to be the, the power point on the side of Elysium since, you know, the Ari and the Jinx haven't really found anything to make the game work. But they're going to look for Freedom oh, Potatoes. They are the Flash ult from Kill Switch. They're looking for the charm. They're going to miss it, though. But the ult coming through. Limpster is here looking to grab one, looking to grab two. They're going to pick up Freedom Potatoes. The Rocket is going to mix. But can Tough Daddy get out of this? Has the ultimate looking to kind of juke back born to ice is here though so they might get a couple kills they're looking for kill switch kill switch on the run it's gonna trade their life for it i think i would i don't, I don't know i think that's an even trade overall matt stat dueling furry little feet up here in the top side furry little feet taking a lot of damage the alt coming through from the bear and while the alt from Aya coming as well looking to kind of put <laughs> is the support is pushing two people off the turret <laughs> Yeah, that's not a good sign. I mean, I will say Furry Little Feet trying to extend the advantage there since there was so much pressure towards that bot side, but couldn't find the kill there to actually extend anything due to a nice flash from, from uh, Matt Sapp. But, you know, I'd say overall not too bad um, since the Ziggs actually did at least trade a lot of HP to guarantee that kill into the pocket of Born to Ice. And this, 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 this Ash is scary now. Kraken and PD secured. And uh, you see Jinx at a very sad, just cracking. Should back for at least some gold, but not going to be anywhere near uh, completion yeah, just, there. 
Yeah, I mean, almost, almost to the Phantom Dancer, but still pretty far behind. I mean, this has just been, Born Dice has been just popping off this game. And the Bear, very little feet on the top side. Might have a little bit easier time with the Ziggs. Has built a lot of MR with that Spirit Visage. And the hook is going to land in the mid lane onto Free Range Beef. Trying to get out the ult, though. Going to land in return. Teleport's coming on through. Free Range Beef getting thrown up. The ultimate from the Ziggs is huge. Dre going to get shredded here. Matsat goes on a killing spree. Tough Daddy on the run. But slow down the Ash. Autos are landing. Kill Switch trying to buy some space. But is going to fall in the process. Born Dice picks up a double. Three for nothing in favor of OVS. A beautiful teleport from Freedom Potatoes works out. They're going to get this mid turret. They might be able to get an inhibitor turret too as Limster is trying to stop furry little feet from getting his furry little paws on that turret. Ultimate bouncing around. The bounce house coming through. He has stopped the push. And that is the call for OVS. Go for the dragon. Let's start getting this stacked up. It's time to put ourselves on soul point. Yeah, I'd say so far it's been completely dominant here for Oversoul. 5k gold up with three dragons almost at soul. Obviously, Chemtech, not the strongest soul, but extra tenacity and, of course, the extra resistances once the soul does get secured will not be unnoticed against particular Elys particularly Elysium's comps with the Leona, Ari, and Vi. These champions need to be able to 100 to 0 someone during the CC and with. Uh, a bit of tenacity, it gets a little bit more difficult. So I'd say uh, quite a good sign here for Oversoul overall. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's not getting much easier. And, and uh, none of the items are really coming online for any of the, the uh, players on Elysium. So they're really going to find a big opportunity. And this charge will at least come through to guarantee some gold, but no local gold secured. So that really is a neutered objective where you just kind of gave away uh, a lot of uh, standing they got the gold here. They got the That's bounties, true. Though. Yeah, something so, at least in their pocket, but the local gold is a significant portion of that. Yeah, that's true, fair as well. And they're still down, even with that bounty, 5,000 gold against OVS, who's looking to start securing the Barons this game. They're, they're, they're really putting on a great performance. It really goes to show, just because they are fifth place, like they're still tied st uh, in the standings with third in terms of match series. They are just... Like they, they they are a good a good team. Fifth place is really not that is really third place in this league. So they they're showing it. They're showing it with their fantastic play right now. Yeah, and I I think if if you are Oversoul, this is a very encouraging sign. So I, I I do believe in them to to close out this game quite cleanly, especially with Soul coming up in three minutes. I think with that, it should just be all but secured and. The, the side lane advantage of, of having the Volley Bear Ari hasn't really come to fruition at all, I'd say. So, and I think it does come a lot off of just not having a lot of support behind them. There's no, I haven't seen any shadowing behind Furry Little Feet, despite how aggressive um, they have been playing. They are at least going to be able to catch this wave, but it's still not the easiest thing to actually defend this turret. Yeah, it's going to be very hard to defend this Matt stat, trying to buy some space here on the side. Everyone looking for him. Drops the ult. Furry little feet trying to go forward here. Teleport's coming on through. The ultimate from the Vi is coming as well. It's going to be a shutdown onto Matt stat, but the fight breaks out, and Born Dice goes on a rampage. Limster going to try to get out of there. He's getting stunned up, getting torn to pieces, going into the little bloblets. Born Dice, though, continuing to poke back. And Dre's gonna pick up Limster. Now Tough Daddy looking for something. The hook though from Aya could be huge here. Can they get it? Freedom Potato's gonna pick up Tough Daddy. They're also gonna pick up Free Range Beef. And just like that, OVS turns the fight around. It's a bit just, it's just too overconfident. I mean, you do have two more charges on the Ari ultimate there, but the damage really isn't there. You need the Jinx in auto range before you go for that charm. Gonna get caught out immediately. And you know, they found a nice pick on to Matt stat and I feel like they could have just taken their win well they had one but with that the lead's gonna stay persistent at 5k and neither of these carries are gonna go down so you really can't make anything happen across the map yeah there's just nothing you can do like we said once Ash's stacks are up does a ridiculous amount of damage and they let them they let them get stacked up and let them turn it around with that over aggressive follow-up but at least they stopped the push from continuing on. They stopped a chance at a Baron. So Elysium could at least take a little bit of pride in that. But Dragon going to be up in a minute 20. It might be the call from OVS. I could easily see them just trading Baron for this Dragon, getting the soul, the chem soul 
for themselves. Make it even harder for Elysium to find a pick, to get to catch someone out, to get that nuke. And Madstat, once again, <laughs> it's a clockwork, man. Yeah, the internet problems persisting, but I will say at the very least, there's no like immediate action gonna come out of this pause, so no fanatic pause shenanigans. Well, instant reconnect, maybe we'll just get back back into it immediately, which would be very nice. Fingers crossed. Hopefully that does end up being the case, but um, yeah, this is just looking rough for Elysium. I, I can't really see a good angle for them to get back into this game. You know, Volley Bear not necessarily one of those solo carry champions we saw. Uh, and Urgot yesterday do a lot of work towards that mid game, mid to late game. But this is not Urgot. This is not a champion that could dominate these fights like a champion like that. Volley Bear really specialized for uh, a very uh, front level engage, and then on top of that, just that side lane power. So I think it's just going to be more tough for them to find something since OVS has drafted a really good team fight comp. You have Zach as a frontliner. You have Xin Zhao as that mid-range bruiser that's able to do a ton of damage to these backline carries. You have Ziggs as a consistent damage dealer. Ash provides CC. A lot of difficulty actually getting in, and they have the easy engage. So with the Chemtech Soul, I think it's going to be pretty much lights out, but we're going to go straight back into the game. You know, nothing, nothing too crazy, so bless up in that way. <laughs> <laughs> Less up indeed. And like you were saying, like I, I, I do find it hard for Elysium to be able to get back into this as we wait for right to catch up. Uh, like OVS has been playing the front to back very well. Yeah, in that fight, they lost Limster and they lost Matt stat, but that's the thing. Those are the front line beat balls. They're supposed to be there. Like we're gonna rewatch this fight here. Yeah. Look at Matt this. Matt gets immediately caught out, but I mean, look at the damage from the Ash. Wow, OP kill switch just gets one-shotted. And yeah. Limster is living for so long and actually forces Jinx back just a bit. They get a little scared of Aya going over the wall there. Obviously, now is when you see three sets three sets of the Ari ultimate there. Jenna just get hooked up immediately, so big call out there by Aya. But I feel like it was just a little bit too overconfident. You didn't have the positioning to be able to actually go for that. I think they could have just taken their two kills and been happy with it, but... Yeah. Oh, we can know. say also, like, they, they bought all that space with, with their tanks, and then even Aya, is very beefy right now, still buying that space. No one else on... Oh, the arrow, gonna miss on to kill switch, but he has pulled back a bit. But yeah, like, they're they're positioning so well. Freedom Potatoes and Born Drives are not walking ahead of their tanks. They are letting them be the body block. They're not getting overconfident. They're not mispositioning. They're playing it immaculately. And your tanks can die as much as they want. As long as your carries are alive, you can still win a fight. And yeah. And the Dragon is up. Oversoul started. did a good job of cutting midwave here, so there's no real pressure. They're going to go for the fight. Yeah, yeah Leona ult comes on through the charm go. Going to land on to Matstat. A shutdown on to Born to Ice. This could be the fight that Elysium was looking for. OVS trying to dance around, getting really scattered in this fight. Isn't able to really find much here except around the dragon. Free range beef and OP kills, which are going to fall. Freedom potatoes, though, will fall in the back. Support and jungle for mid and AD carry. You take that every day of the week if you're Elysium, but can they get out is the question. They may have stuck around a little too much, and they're just gonna reposition around for this dragon. They did stop it, they stopped the soul, but OBS is right back on it. No jungler to contest them. They have the smite advantage here, the teleport coming in from Tough Daddy. There isn't a lot of damage here, for the side of OVS, they've got to be careful. They're very beefy. Matt Sack goes in on a Tough Daddy and is now taking a lot of shots. Aya trying to get away and try not to give the reset. The arrow's coming through. It's going to go wide, though. Furry little feet going to take out Matt Stat. Meanwhile, Aya just trying to get out of here. Limster just trying to buy space for the support. And Tough Daddy will take him out. Elysium wins the extended fight. Win the dragon. Delay soul that much longer. Yeah, and the first real win here for Elysium all game. So I'd say... At least that's encouraging. They're still going to be down in gold, but they at least delay the soul here for Oversoul. So I think not all over, all in all, pretty good. They're, they are going to set their sights on Baron. Dre Chisel still low from that last fight. If that arrow landed in that last fight, it could have been a disaster for Elysium where the soul secured and, and the game's pretty much out of their hands. But nice dodge away there. And now it's going to yeah. be a little scary. Freedom yeah. should be able Ooh. to poke so much. Yeah, as, uh, Freedom. Freedom with huge poke right there. Born to ice as well. Free range potatoes going too far forward. The ult flash. Matsat has left the game again. But the fight continues to rage. Born to ice trying to kite back. Limster trying to buy some space. Everyone trying to just 
kite for Born to Ice. The bear is trying to run him down, but Furry Little Feet is about to be a furry little rug as he gets run down by the side of OVS. And Limster's going to pick up that kill. It was very chaotic, but they stopped the Baron. And now it's OVS's turn to take a crack. And MS that just refreshing himself coming back into this game. Now, can OVS get this? Can Limster buy the space or can Elysium stop it? Let's yeah. see. And they, they're they hanging around. Tough Daddy is here. Every Limster doesn't know all three of them are here. Free range beef missing the E. Does manage to land the Q, though. Limster, though, with b double grab arrow as well. The bounces are coming around. The Baron's going to go over to OVS. Now, can Limster get out? The ult from the Ziggs will buy him the space to escape. And OVS gets out scot-free with the Baron. Yeah, and that that's a nice well-executed play there. They had Limster over the wall to make sure it's very hard for Killswitch to actually get in. As soon as that Q does get charged up, nice flash in with that slam there. And it's a nice denial on the Baron. And, you know, but despite the last fight going the way of Elysium, they haven't really let that dis discourage them at all. Matstat still has been pretty uncontested in these fights since Xin Zhao was such a good pickup, especially into the team that Elysium drafted. And it, it's going to have to be that way since... I, I talked about how the damage might be a problem for Oversoul come mid-game, but Matstat really is the uh, kind of stopgap there that still allows them to actually win these engages, but Killswitch is going to have to give away the blue buff, and you know now the dragon's going to get even more difficult to actually make it happen here. Yeah, this whole, this whole series of events has gone on so long, Dragon died and is already halfway to respawning, so... Could be another point of contention as OVS is just trying to get these waves and trying to make as much as they can with this Baron. They're rotating to the bottom side to try to t catch this outer turret, trying to stack it back up as much gold as they can. They let that gold lead slip a bit. They're getting it back. They've managed to pull it back to 6K right now. And they're pushing in on the doors of Elysium's base. Elysium needs to make a stand here. They need to find another fight like they did around that dragon. They need to kill Born to Ice. If Born to Ice is allowed to live in these fights, it is just hell on earth for Elysium. If they catch him, they've shown they can win it. There's still the potential. Slimmer, Limster and Furry Little Feet are just going at it in the mid lane. The grasp trade's coming on through. And OVS just continuing to push out Elysium around this turret. Buying a lot of space. They're trying to push forward. Got to be careful. The Huge. arrow is going to land on the Dre. Huge. The only half helps them, though. And the fight has broken out. The Vi into the back line. Trying to get onto these carries. Oh, Freedom Potatoes. Gold's golden. And now the turnaround. Born Dice going to pick up one. Free range beef will go down. The hook lands on the Dre. And he's going to fall, too. Matt's not going to pick him up. The turret's going to fall. Uh, the Vi is going to fall, too. Furry Little Feet trying to do another split push, just like last game. But I don't think, yet again, it is going to work. Tough Daddy looking for the charm is gonna land but it's not gonna matter is gonna fall born die is gonna pick up that for a double kill the bear is running to get back to the base is teleporting to a ward desperate to try to stop the win but it will not get there in time the dunk will be stalled and obs We'll get a clean 2-0. Nice engage there with the Enchanted Crystal Arrow and also a crazy hook there by Aya around the turret to actually secure it. Just Nautilus things, that's just how that goes. But they're gonna claim that in a pretty clean fashion 2-0 over Elysium and I'd say pretty dominant fashion and that really establishes them in that playoff spot now. They are gonna be in that, that, that talk of who's really in the middle competing for that fourth spot. Um, because this league is a lot, is pretty close. So you really want to get these wins on the board and having a nice clean 2-0 means your record's even better. So if someone's, you know, tied on, on, uh, any type of game record status, you might be able to just pull away the win there. Obviously what matters more than the, the head to head, uh, is that game score. So pretty impressive stuff there for Oversoul. And I'd say a little bit discouraging for Elysian there. I don't believe they're out of playoff contention yet, but they're going to need to close out these next two weeks 2-0, most likely, if they want to have a, a, a good shot. And I, I think it's mostly out of their hands. They have to do their best, obviously, to maybe potentially sneak in there, but it's it, it's a, a little bit discouraging here. Now, you just need to do your best as you uh, go into these next two weeks. Absolutely. And looking at the standings right now, I'm actually looking them over as we speak. ID and DDG are both playing. ID is second. DDG is currently tied with OVS. OVS with this win now moves up tied uh, with the same win record as ID in second place. If ID loses this game 
to DDG. That means they are now in this crazy fight of four teams at five and two, assuming Akuma Blades manages to win today. There'd be four teams at five and two <laughs> in second place. That's 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 crazy. That is that is just absurd. That means one of those four teams will like they'll they'll be the fighting for those last playoff spots. And yeah, with with the way with the way Oversoul's looking and looking at the like the back end of their schedule, I'm looking at over right now. Oversoul plays AFK Ooh. and ID. They play the top two teams in this, so this is gonna be hard. They need to hope DDG loses this to kind of give them a little bit more breathing room. Yeah, I mean they, also, have, they have a hard schedule. They do, but that also makes it exciting. We saw how good they look today. I'm interested to see how they perform against the top two teams in this league. You know, this, these could be the star matchups for the next two weeks. So, yeah. And I'd I, say, I, I'd say if you take a win off of either of those teams, you're feeling great. Um, because I, I don't think many other teams have been able to actually pick up those wins in that middle block of the standings. So getting even one best of win over either of these teams would be kind of solidifying your place in that top four and moving on to playoffs. Uh, and, you know, and then it's just up to, you, you would want good seeding as well, because remember, this is a two-group setup here in the Vanquisher League. So obviously, you're going to be ver if you're the fourth in your group, you're going to be versing the first of the other group. That is tough. <laughs> so you really want to secure those good seeds so you don't end up playing against the best team immediately. You give yourself a bit of time to scale up and maybe just fight for placings if you aren't going to end up winning the league. But, you know, that is the kind of thing that you got to consider as you move on to these final weeks of Vanquisher here. Yeah, and again, looking at the game... I, I, I got to give it to, to Born Dice. I got to give it to Freedom Potatoes and Born Dice. I think equally they shared in the success of their team today. They were both monsters. They both did absolutely incredible. And it's not why we're not talking about it. We're talking about it because we are this close to the playoff stand, uh, to the playoffs. That's why we're talking so much about the standings here. Uh, one more little thing I want to bring about the playoffs. So the other two teams they are tied with currently, DDG and AKM. Uh, they play they play each other in the last week. So if oh. standings hold as they are, and everyone wins out to that point, OVS is basically going to be guaranteed playoffs. All they have to do is it get one more win, and they're almost all but guaranteed to get in there because their opponents have to play each other. So yeah. this win was huge for OVS. It's going to have huge playoff implications for them, but... I just, I'm so excited. Last two weeks, this is where all the hype starts happening. This is where all yeah. the good stuff starts going on. This is where the, where the teams are really close. You know, there's no real defined top four. I'll say I cast Divinity yesterday, and there really is a defined top four in that league. It's like very much like, okay, these are our four teams. I'm pretty sure it's almost completely locked after yesterday's results. So it is exciting to see these like final playoff runs actually come to fruition because that is really where things get dicey. And, you know, you don't really get good recognition for having a couple good wins in a season, but not making playoffs. It's kind of like how you don't want to be the bridesmaid. You want to be the bride. That's just how it works. Um, so, you know, make the best of it while you are here. But either way, good performance here from Oversoul 2-0 over Elysium, I'd say. Exciting stuff coming into the exciting. next couple of weeks. Yeah, exciting. Keep, we'll have to keep an eye out on how these teams do. But that does it from us here today. Thank you all so much for watching. We'll see you tomorrow with some more league action. And me and probably Golden Gad, maybe, maybe Sater. We'll see who's next week. But we'll see you next week for week number eight of the Vanquisher League. Catch you later.
Let's have a bit of fun till I downfall. My love, if you feel like I do right now, don't say you're on the run to the other side. My love. 
despicable. Uh, I see you looking at me, looking at you. Hold up, where you going? What you doing? Who you seeing? What you need? What you want? I said, without you by my side, my side, my side. Without you by my side One time, one time From side to side Without you by my side I can 